Oh, hi. We're going live. And that's because, let me get this light on. It is a uh, Sunday at 6. No, man, this is a late night DP. We're going to get noisy in here. And I was out of town, so we did miss Sunday. But we're doing a late night DP. So this is going to be low energy. But you're getting what you pay for. We got Cody in the chat. Hey, Cody. Drop a booyah if you're hanging out. Oh! -ho -ho! And there is the hey. first lady. Deandra. That's, that's me. Deandra. Can you believe it? It's late night DP. This is what we're doing. This is. This is DP after hours. DP after hours. I love a little late night DP, of course. And, uh... You know, I've been all over God's green anal. I'm a, I'm very tired, very drained. But we're going to keep this party rolling. We've got to do DP, of course. Not doing DP, not an option. A day without DP is like a day without a uh, coming in your face. That's right. That's what they say is a, a facial a day keeps the doctor away, of course. Oh, of course. We all know that. And by doctor, we mean Dr. Danny Campbell. <laughs> The only doctor you need is a doctorate. That's right. That's a, <laughs> it is funny that that's the, it's doctorate and PhD. You're both a doctor. <laughs> right. I, I remember when I was filling out college applications, um, I always went through the ringer for that because it's like, I never knew what to put down for dad's degree. Cause it's like a, a highest level of education for your parents. And it's like, well, he's, he, he, he's got more than a master's, but, not enough to make him uh, cred credited anywhere. <laughs> not, not quite a PhD, but it not is cool. quite a PhD. It is cool that it's doctor. I, I, I mean, this is nothing, but it's also it has always been funny to me that it's uh, he's a D man. If you study the Bible long enough and, and become a master of it, you become a doctor of ministry or a demon. It's like <laughs> you level up for <laughs> demon status. What? Well, I mean, you know what they say, uh, you either die a pastor or live long enough to see yourself become a demon. <laughs> well, I'm a demon. <laughs> I'm a demon. <laughs> Motivate! Oh, we got Brandon Bezwick joining us. Drop a booyah, Brandon. He's got a stream at nine. Everyone check out his stream, folks. We won't yeah. overlap here because Monday check is not our territory, so we don't want to steal ratings from Brandon. We are not trying to poach. We are simply trying to catch up and, uh, you know... Get get ourselves a little educated on what we've been doing lately. Because, uh, you know, what's better than a PhD is a PhDP. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That is right. And Brendan's got a question for us, which I believe he's asked before. But I'll be honest, I'm either drunk or high or whatever, usually. Uh, I don't remember how we answered. But do you think Bud Light is too light, Dean? Well, do I think Bud Light is too light? I think Bud Light is light enough if you're trying to drink water. Yeah, that's right. Hey, do you think a piss is light enough? <laughs> if if you want to drink a man's beer, then maybe you should go for something else. <laughs> that's right. What would you say the manliest beer is? Uh, manliest beer, I would say, is probably a. It's probably a pilsner. Probably a pilsner. So not a specific, just any pilsner. But you know what the craziest beer is? What's that? Uh, four loco. Oh, oh I know. Poor Loco, I've had nothing but, I mean, hog wild experiences. Because every time I've had them, I drink them like normal beer. And then it's like, I, I've never had a Four Loco night and not puked. I've never had a Four Loco. I don't know what the deal is with them. What well, makes them so crazy? Well, I mean, it's weird. I think they changed it. But what made them crazy was it used to be like a shit ton of alcohol. Like it's really high alcohol content for, for like a canned drink, right? Like yeah, drink, yeah, like seventeen or something. But Ooh, Jesus. It's also, I think it used to have um, it used to have caffeine, so it would get you really oh my like, god, like, up, but you're also getting drunk as fuck at the same time. I don't think they have caffeine in 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 them anymore, but they're still very high alcohol content. You know, there was some fucking like marketing meeting where they were just like, uh, you know, what we'd be better if we put a little bit of a little bit of juice in this beer. <laughs> Yeah. And Brandon I also raises a great point. 
How come they never made five loco? I think it's because four <laughs> is hard wild enough. Four is crazy. Well, if they made a five loco, they'd have to make a six loco. That's and true. then it would have to be a fucking six 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 loco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make our own brand of, of six 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 loco. This is the <laughs> darkest stout possible. <laughs> Oh my god, I am firing on all cylinders tonight. <laughs> just one flavor, but I was correct. Okay, so no more caffeine, but I really just one flavor? I thought there were multiple flavors. But maybe I'm wrong. Pretty I, you know. Hell loco. That's right. Uh, oh, guys. you can go maybe, loco for loco. Maybe we could do that. Maybe maybe we just need to pop the cherry and do a four loco episode just to go hog wild. You know what? I'm down for that. Yeah. I, I think a, not a bad idea. And then know. we could do... But we are stretch goal, folks. <laughs> do a four loco episode. <laughs> I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off. We could do... Oh, no, you're precious. I lost the thought. It's gone. That's all right. It'll probably come back. If it comes back, p feel free to interrupt me. And uh, <laughs> I want to say thank you to Official Bird Brains for hanging out. This is DP. It's Mondays at 8. <laughs> this is late night. <laughs> Sundays at 6. Uh, just call it Mondays at 8, because that's when we're on today. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I have been all over, D. I mean, I, I just... Let's get into it, because I, I just saw you in person. We've been you going, did! We, we went hog wild together. I mean... Yeah, somebody had a birthday recently. The birthday boy was getting wild in the city of Philadelphia. That's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, my birthday's coming up, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it Opa White Woman style. I'm uh, celebrating the whole month. <laughs> You're uh, crushing those white claws. You're demanding excellent service every restaurant you go into. <laughs> You're you buying things to return later. That's You're right. going to make a heartfelt post about uh, pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to tell everyone, hey, I'm actually an ally. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> that, is the, that is the peak white woman thing you could do, but, is talk about how good you are and do nothing <laughs> to change. Yeah. Do I actually do anything? No. But I tell people I'm a good person. <laughs> you tell so many people they know exactly where you stand. <laughs> But yeah, I've been I've been all over. I uh, you know, been been. I, I forget what even what did we even talk about last. Where was I coming from? It just well, what I'll say is, it just so happens that I've always said October best month. It's my birthday month, but it's like I love Halloween. I love it getting cooler in the air. So it's like I just love doing stuff in October. And I've just been uh, it's it's been lining up where all these great things are happening week after week after week so you know i go i go where nature calls me <laughs> that's what I'm white saying. boy summer more like frumpy boy fall because you are peaking that's right yeah hey white boy summer no how about uh clinically depressed fall <laughs> how about obnoxious ally autumn <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right um, oh, but yeah, you were up here. You were visiting me and Samantha Paget, producer of DP, also a very funny comic, who's uh, doing something at Raven Lounge in Philly tonight. Oh, my God. I hope I didn't keep you from the show. Oh, no, dude. Uh, it's actually funny. I have been going hog wild against my... I have been going involuntarily hog wild, oh, i.e. Uh, I've been investing in crypto recently. Oh, I love it. Um, I got into the coins, baby. I've got a little bit of I got a little bit of ETH. I got a little bit of ADA. I got a little bit of Doge and Shiba <laughs> I've been going hog wild with those NFTs. Call them NFDs because I've been dropping my coin into cryptocurrency. This is about to become a, a crypto show. This is going to be a <laughs> crypto funded and crypto because you hear a lot of people complain about all oh, this dude. We'll corner you at a, at a party and let's talk about crypto. Well, guess what? That's what DP is going to be from now on. Call call me a super dog because I am into crypto. <laughs> yeah, more like super doge. Super do super doge. Crypto the super doge. Crypto, it's super just doge. a new show. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's I Superman's think- dog, but he's just obnoxious at parties whenever he has uh, too many uh, IPAs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Mm. More but like yeah, IP game, really? because it really brings out the Binance in you. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to cut you off with my stupid crypto joke. No, it was, a good, it, it was perfect. It was a nice little tag. Just like the, the movie tag. Oh, and you're it. I You were rearing to go with something, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, uh, you know, I, I was in Philly. We hung out. We did a lot. I mean, Badger and I, you mentioned her doing comedy. We hit a bunch of mics. Very fun. I was happy to do some comedy in Philly. Hell yeah. He was at Ortley. He was a comedy John. He was a grape room. He was hitting the spots. That's right. Grape room, comedy John. Uh, what was the other one? I forget. Port Leaves. Port Leaves. That's right. Yeah. Very fun. All very fun. I appreciate all the stage time up there. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun doing comedy. It's nice when you go to a scene and no one knows your jokes. So you can just coast. I'm a big fan of resting on my laurels, of course. <laughs> oh, speaking of Philly comedy, we got Rat Boy James Moss in the chat. Thanks and for there's also a plane right flying overhead. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the sport, Rat Boy. Thank you. Rat Boy, very funny guy. He's, uh, I think he's also riffing at the Raven tonight. Is this a roast show? What's the deal with this Raven show? Uh, so there's a roast show that goes on first. Monday nights, a do-rag and the deer tag record their podcast there. Uh, Drew Montana, Naeem Ali, Rob Cruz, funny guys. Oh, yeah. And they uh, do a live pod at Raven Lounge. Very cool. And then they do, yeah, and then they go into the roast battle. And lately they've been doing this thing after the roast battle called Riff at the Raven, where two comics will just get up and uh, joke with each other impromptu for like uh, 15 minutes or so. It's really cool. That's right, yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick was telling me about that. That sounds rad. Um, she, she, uh, Kind of, what what what's the word I'm looking for? I I want to say attributed, but I know I know that's not right. Compared it to host battle. Ah ah okay yeah. I always like it when it's like I don't I don't love uh, like it, you know the ben, Benson interruption or just like interruption shows where it's like hey we're gonna shit on this guy's jokes. I don't like that, but it's like when it's when it's riffing, it's like yeah, let's riff, let's figure out these jokes. I love it. Yeah, it's uh, it's less of a snipe and more of a collaboration. <laughs> right, right. Mm. And another Yo, thing we did I, in Philly, and I'm reminded because we have Davey Bo joining. Uh, Davey Bo, our guest. We went to AEW. We went to AEW. We saw Dynamite and Rampage. Yeah, that's right. This is a, a this is could be a segment. This is another uh, edition of ADW Rampage. <laughs> <laughs> this is another segment of ADW Rampage. We've That's done right. two on the show so far. <laughs> That's exactly right. And uh, just uh, unreal. I, amazing show. I, I mean, I don't know. It's a lot of comics checking it out, so we probably do have a good amount of wrestling fans that listen. But, oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> that, that Venn diagram is a single circle. Like. <laughs> But yeah, amazing. I went, when when I we decided to go, you got me the tickets for my V-Day, which I greatly appreciate. I wish there was some way I could repay you. Oh, uh, Christmas is coming up, so I'm sure you'll find out a way. Maybe <laughs> if I give you a certain wallet address or oh, a certain my God, you're gonna coin. Have to <laughs> yeah, if you get me a Bitcoin for Christmas, that'll that'll make it all worth it. Dude, if you asked for crypto for Christmas, like, mom probably would get you, like, a, a post <laughs> of the super dog. Like, <laughs> mom no mom would just be like, yeah. <laughs> Could I get some Ethereum, mom? <laughs> I'm really dying to get some uh, lumens in my in my wallet for Christmas. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was just like, I want to come to Philly, hang out, do some comedy. I'll make it concur with an AEW show. I didn't realize it was going to be the two-year anniversary, and we got to see a fucking stacked card. Oh, my God. Dude, what, what would you say, dude, was uh, some of your highlights for that show? Because that was a fucking insane show that we saw. Oh, definitely. I mean, the, the, the latter match for sure. I mean, if you know me, you know I'm a big Hangman Page mark. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you saw me. I was When he came out, I was 
circling around my hat. I was waving it in the air, freaking out. The whole crowd was yelling cowboy shit. Nobody forgot, despite what someone on Twitter want to say. No one forgot about the hangman. You you really should have seen him. He was very excited. I mean, his dick is normally three inches, and it was 15 feet that night. Oh, my God. Yeah, it gave me – it was like a, a blue chew, basically. Um, the energy in that room. Everyone was hard. Sting and Darby Allen were in the rafters because we were in the nosebleeds, and his dick just shot out of his pants and knocks them both off. <laughs> yeah, and- <laughs> I'm not stinging Darby out. They're dead, unfortunately. Uh, but maybe Malachi Black can revive them somehow with his mystical powers. Honestly, that that is a great thing for a, a wrestling company to have, is just somebody who's touched with dark arts so that whenever the wrestlers are out, they can just bring them back. I know. I wish I wish he was around when Eddie was around. <laughs> he brought him back. I really I wish he'd brought back Chris Benoit. Exactly. Exactly. Crispin what Wyatt. a great guy. Can you imagine the nu- nuclear heat he would have had after killing his family? Dude, that would be that would be an awful th- that honestly would be like a terrible thing for like any kind of justice thing is like your punishment if you like did a murder suicide it's just like the police can now revive you <laughs> and bring you in for questioning. <laughs> if if the police somehow get necromancy, uh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, that would, that you can no longer you can no longer pedal like uh, fucking hexes off crones and stuff like that. You'll have to start, have to start saying all crones are bastards. <laughs> hey, Alex, what's up? We got Alex Castane in the chat. We got Mark Mitchell. Drop a booyah. Thanks for hanging out. It's a uh, late night DP. L- little late night DP. You know, uh, time is a construct. And so it may be eight something on a Monday, but right here on this corner of Instagram, it's Sundays at six. It's it's Sundays at six somewhere. <laughs> it's <laughs> pour me something uh, funny and uh, pertinent. <laughs> We're both wiped out, folks. So sorry, the rips are gonna just be. That's what I like about late night DP is it can be low effort, and it's like, hey, sorry, <laughs> I'm tired. I I don't know what to tell you. This is the cookout of riffs right here. You can't be getting uh, filet mignon every Sunday. That's right. That's why. For Monday, you get a little skirt steak. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> this is going to be the chuck steak of pods, folks. Um, <laughs> it's a lesser cut. It is cheaper, but you know we're hanging out. We we're doing it for you. You were doing it for you. That's right. Um, but I, yeah, it, I would probably say the whole ladder match was my favorite shit. I mean. I loved seeing Malachi Black. We got to see Punk kind of promo and wrestle. I mean, we got to see a lot of cool shit. Um, now, you were saying the eight-man tag was your favorite, right? Yeah, dude. I really enjoyed that eight-man tag. Holy shit. Unreal. I've never – I've I've only seen stuff like that on TV, that and ladder matches. It was really incredible to see that live. Definitely the highlight for me. Yeah, bug yeah. I mean, uh, just the star power on that match, we were saying. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. It was, you know, the entire elite. You got the Bucks, you got Kenny, you got Adam Cole, and then you got Jurassic Express, Christian Cage, and the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. What a lineup. Unreal. Star-studded night. Jesus Christ. Just unreal. That's pretty I have much to say, our review of the show. Unreal. Pretty much our review. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the match that surprised me the most was uh, the Luch Brothers. Oh, that, yeah. That was on Rampage, right? Yeah, that was on Rampage. I was not expecting that at all. Um, and you know I love Lucha, but the match itself, holy shit, that was a tight match. Very oh, fast-paced. Very fun to watch. Every time you watch them, they're just it, – it's, it's crazy. Like, the stuff they do is like, well, how the fuck am I seeing this? It's insane. Yeah, dude. Holy shit. Davey Bo in the chat has pointed out the blue meanie was also there. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was a awesome. nice little bit of fan service. I was on dark, <laughs> but that fucking ruled. I did not expect to see blue meanie. They they rolled him out because I mean the crowd was very hype on ECW, of course, in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and that was a great fucking cameo, especially having him on dark because it's like blue meanie's fun, but I don't know with how stacked that dynamite card was. I don't know if he needed to be on dynamite, but mm-hmm. on dark. I mean, there was a reason to go for the entire show. Dark, dynamite, rampage, everything had amazing fucking like holy shit moments. 
Oh my god. No, it was incredible. The more I think about it too, that was a nice little bit of fan service too for the people who've been like sticking with it for decades. Just to see somebody come out that like it's just a just a little something for them, you know? I know. I didn't expect to see the blue meanie. <laughs> Unreal. I also really like the tribute at the end of the di- that they did after they uh, technically ended the show and Tony Khan came out and just wanted to do a thank you for everybody. That I thought that was really cool. Just yeah. paying paying it back and paying it forward. Yeah, the little dark uh, promo that was great. It was uh, it was all the ECW OGs they had. I guess it's Taz and Jericho just saying thanks, just having a good time. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. so what I really like about AEW is like. The, the whole forbidden door stuff it's like they don't ignore the entire wrestling world but they also they respect wrestling lore they respect the history of it yeah I, God. It's, it's great to see people like actually working with other people and giving credit where credit is due yeah it's not just, I love it. um, a whole world. acting like they own everything <laughs> yeah that's exactly right oh yeah that's exactly right that is exactly right um, so you were you were up here fucking around in Philadelphia for a little bit, and then you went back south of the Mason Dixon line to North Carolina, didn't you? Yeah, well, at first I I went back to DC, uh, did State Theater in DC. Want to shout out to that room, super fun State Theater. Check out a show there. I think it's technically it's like Falls Church, Virginia. It's it's not technically DC, but that's a, call, that's a DC it, enough. The, yeah, and and like they call it DC basically. They're like the State Theater DC. <laughs> Um, it's DC Jason. Yeah, but very, very fun uh, show. I had this kooky woman in the front, not just for me, uh, for all the comics. There was this woman in the front, and she wasn't, she was heckling, but it wasn't like, it was the strangest fucking heckle, heckling style I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> the, what she was doing is, she wasn't, um, like, trying to interrupt, uh, like, what people were saying. Everything you introduced is like, hey, so I like uh, I like this. She would just, like, tell you. She thought it was like a conversation. She would just tell you how she felt about it. She would just be like, oh, oh. I, you know, I, I don't. And it's like, okay. And she was just doing it for, like, everyone. It's just like, it was, re- it was very strange. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like, she thought there was going to be a dialogue. Right, it was this old old woman on the front, and like all the comics had to like roll with it. I just like kind of shit on it up top early, and then just talked over. Her. But uh, it was it was it was the craziest like style of echoing. I wish I could dig, explain it better because it's like it was just so like s- say anything, say something you like, something you don't like. Oh man, uh, Philly cheesesteaks. How about those? Oh, Love Philly cheesesteaks. Never had a Philly cheesesteak. Well, I wasn't talking to you, so get the fuck out. <laughs> It's just like, 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 I knew she was going to do it. So, like, I started, I went up and, like, started with my drug material, material right? And I was like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of drugs. And she was like, I don't like drugs. And then I was like, oh, well, that, that's all right, man. But uh, there's a whole other audience I'm talking to. It's not just you. <laughs> and it, I, I was just like, I hope you do this at every show you go to, not just comedy. Like, I hope you go to, uh, like, I hope you go to see Rent and you're just like, I, I actually don't have AIDS. And they're like, oh, well. <laughs> We're, per- we're performing a show about AIDS right now, so <laughs> I don't really know how that applies to the rest of the show. Dude, Dude that'd be fucking hilarious. But very fun. It was just strange because it didn't seem malicious at all. It was just like, she seemed like senile almost. It's just like, can oh, you, that's bizarre. No one's really talking to you, ma'am. Like, what are you, what are you doing? What the hell, dude? Holy shit. And she was with a guy who, like, I assume her husband. Here's the other weird thing about it. Her husband, whoever the guy she is, she's with, they're both, like, older, right? Like, old old people. Okay. In their 60s, probably, right? Mm. Maybe older. She, she's doing that, and, I, and I'm not being hyperbolic when I say it for every joke. She's doing that for every, like, setup the comics are doing, right? Jesus. Her husband didn't say a single word the whole time. He was just sitting there, like, watching. <laughs> and not really even like looking at her or like or like he didn't have his arm around her he's just kind of sitting there and she's just doing it the whole time <laughs> what the fuck dude <laughs> that, that is so fucking wild <laughs> it's like he's just used to it at this point that makes me wonder it's like how long has she been doing this like right. has this been like a decades thing in the making 
It's like maybe there was a time when he would interject every now and then, just be like, "Well, do you have to?" But at this point, he's just like, "I'm just gonna let her have her peace." Yeah, he's he's a broken man at this point. He's just kind of like, "Fuck it," like, <laughs> "What the fuck ever?" Yeah, he should uh he should delete her and say uh, obsolete as he stands over her. <laughs> he should pull out that broken gimmick in their marriage. <laughs> he certainly seems like a broken man. <laughs> Dude, what if fucking what if fucking like marriages and relationships follow like wrestling arcs? Oh, that would be that'd be awesome. <laughs> Dude, that would be fucking hilarious. It's just like whenever there's a dispute or something, it's like, well, you know what? It was your night to do the dishes. And you know how we're gonna settle this? In a fucking tag team match. <laughs> yep. You and me versus the cats and the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put your ass through a table, honey. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. TLC. I just want a little TLC when I come home. All Welcome I get is table to the the Dispute Federation, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude! <laughs> Holy shit! The Domestic Dispute Federation. <laughs> the DDF. It's actually Domestic Dispute uh, Entertainment now, so I don't know. What you're <laughs> yeah, it's sports entertainment. It's not wrestling. <laughs> I had to change locales because I heard shouting off the street. Oh, wow. Sounds like, uh, can get a sounds like we got a live uh, DDF match going on right now. <laughs> yeah, see if you can get a little uh, DLC for us. Uh, yeah, maybe, DLC, maybe I'll uh, pop back on and see if they cut a promo. <laughs> yeah, if you can get a, an exclusive Philly street fight, because that was something else we saw at AEW was a Philly street fight. Yeah, we saw a Philly street fight, which, by Philly standards, very underwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, this is not very, it wasn't very violent, to, uh, to be honest, but. They never even I hit the street. Like you might be able to catch a street fight for us. I might, I might be, uh, able to get a street fight. Let me just go north a little bit. <laughs> but if I go far enough on 52nd, I could probably find something for us. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, hell yeah. It'll be a no holds barred. The only bars we're holding are crowbars <laughs> and, uh, lead pipes. <laughs> and possibly. A little piece. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, a hog wild match. We could create our own stipulation. Dude, what would a hog wild match entail? I don't even know. I'm trying to think. Like, we could definitely. Uh, I feel like you have to. Okay, so you have to drink a four logo. I was just about to say you. You have to smash. It's a four on four, so each person smashes four four logos. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then it could be like first blood, but it's like first person to puke uh, is out. Like if like if you puke, you're eliminated. <laughs> or we could do it by uh, Sophie from uh, the Bell Rose Show rules. If you puke, you have to drink it. Oh yeah, yeah, true. It's a little callback to her hog wild story where she drank her own vomit. That's right. Yeah, don't don't give it all away. We won't go check that episode out, folks. Go. Uh, I go forget the name, of it, but. Uh... <laughs> Go to go to fucking DP on Spotify and check out that episode. That's right. Just go to DP Sundays at six on Spotify or Apple, <laughs> Apple or your fucking YouTube, wherever you listen to shows, it's on there. I guarantee it. Just plug it into Deezer and pull it up. It'll probably <laughs> pop up when you do that. DP big fucking Stitcher. <laughs> You're gonna need some Stitchers after the hog fight. Yeah, it sounds like somebody's going to need some stitches out there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but I mean, Philly I mean, fight. we like to get vulgar and sexual. I think maybe, like, the weapons surrounding the ring could be, like, some dildos. Like, that'd be cool, smacking someone with a huge dildo. Well, let's, let's think back to some uh, previous stories that we've gotten. Uh, like, uh, one could be one of the knives that Jack Jarreau's buddy made. That's true. That, that could knife. be pretty hog wild. Yeah, that'd be pretty One would have to be... Um, my guitar and a blue dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think of some other ones. Um, Four Loco, definitely something like that. A uh, fistful of sand, if I remember uh, our producer Samantha Paget's story, kicking sand into people's faces at the beach. <laughs> That's right, and that that would. Or was that Brandon Beswick's actually? That might have been Brandon Beswick's. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? That might have been Brandon Beswick's actually. Sorry, I cut off what you were saying. That might have been Brandon's, yeah. But I, I was just saying that would fuck someone up if you threw sand in their eyes. Mm. If you're if you're fucked up on a four loco and then someone throws sand in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> Dude, that would be a terrible way to spend an evening. It's just like you, you're four, four locos in. You're eight or 16 loco, depending on what kind of math you're doing. And <laughs> yeah, you just get a it's full of... Locos in. <laughs> <laughs> 16 logos <laughs> it's, mul- it's multiplicative <laughs> that's hilarious yeah you add four for every for every drink you have it's, it's four times four logo that's right we'll do we're, we're gonna teach basic arithmetic and, and multiplication tables through <laughs> through how many four logos you've drank Samantha has four four locos. Brandon drinks two of them. How many <laughs> locos does Brandon have in his body? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you start drinking uh, four loco in Richmond, and then you start driving to Philly, <laughs> <laughs> at a at a uh, at a speed of sixty miles per hour, <laughs> yeah. If a train from Philadelphia runs exclusively on Four Loco. Yeah, that'd be cool. A train that r- ran on Four Loco. I mean, if you're running a train, it might run on Four Loco. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's the only express I run on. <laughs> um, but basically, well, what we're I'm riding on the Ram track. The- <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> I'm just saying, basically, what we're getting at here is uh, we're pivoting the show. It's going to turn into less comedy and more crypto advice and uh, hog wild matches, basically death matches. We're rebranding. I got a notification on my phone earlier and uh, Bitcoin is up by about 5%. So uh, <laughs> yeah. things are looking good on the crypto front. <laughs> Anything that's current for just a little bit for five seconds, that's all we're talking about. That's the way we do it. That's all we need. We're going to get very topical. So when you go back to listen to these episodes, they are not going to hit the same. <laughs> yeah. It, it's <laughs> if you revisit one in, in two months, nothing. But in the moment, it's a good live stream. Yeah. We're going to start going for the SNL model. It's the same bit. We just recycle it over and over again. And we insert current figures names into it. <laughs> and it's never quite as good the second or the 22nd time. Yeah, but it was good in, like, the 80s. DP was awesome. It was good. The 80s. Oh, 80s DP? Mm, phenomenal. <laughs> Bots DP? Meh, you can start to see the decline. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since Bill Hader left DP, it's just been a real shit show, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, this show... Yeah, you remember when Fred Armisen was on DP? <laughs> <laughs> this actually is just SNL. This is an extension of SNL. This this is exactly SNL. This is SNL Sundays at six. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday Night Live Sundays at six. <laughs> but you know, time is a social construct. So right now it's SNL uh, Mondays at eight thirty. <laughs> That's right. Time is an illusion, and so is uh, come in your fucking face. <laughs> come is an illusion. Come is an illusion, <laughs> dude. So some some guy that's just like a. He just, like, refuses. It's like, no, I'm not fucking gay. It's like, well, then why are dudes always, like, jizzing in your face and stuff like that? You're just like, oh, that's an illusion, bro. Comes comes an illusion. It's a myth. Nah, I ain't homophobic. I don't see dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, that's basically, basically, I mean, like I said, I've just been going to a bunch of different things. I mentioned the hockey game. I mentioned we went to AEW, and I went to just, I just went to North Carolina for NASCAR. I went to a fucking NASCAR race. Yeah, baby. Talk about critical race theory. Oh, Paige yeah. was watching it all weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like, it was a fun-ass time. It was fucking great. I've never been to, like, a, I've been to smaller races. I've never been to a NASCAR thing. Well, how was it, dude? It was really fun. I mean, you, you say race, you're exactly right, dude. A lot of racist people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was hog wild. It was crazy. I didn't realize uh, this is crazy because I've been to a lot of different kinds of events. They let you Mm. bring coolers in. You can bring in as much booze as you want. We were just crushing fucking booze all day. I probably had 18 beers over the course of nine hours. (laughs) Now they that is a huge selling point. Jesus Christ. Isn't that crazy? I couldn't believe it. Dude, that's fucking wild. Imagine that's if other things would do that. 
That makes a lot of sense, actually. That makes a lot of sense. Imagine if you could do that in, like, another thing, like, uh, say, church. <laughs> yeah. If you could just bring all the beer you could carry into church, that would be so sick. <laughs> you know, water into wine, and uh, wine into uh, 40s. Yeah. Are you feeling the influence? It's like, I mean, I'm under the influence. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, more like Mickey Ultra. Yeah. Hey. I don't need uh, the Trinity when I have four loco. <laughs> it's three plus one, if you know what I mean. The Father, <laughs> Son, the Holy Ghost, and my fucking mouth right here. <laughs> um, no, dude, uh, how much you want to bet that there's, like, some fucking truck out there that has, like, a Back the Blue sticker and stuff like that, and then there's a bumper sticker that says, the only critical race theory I need is the Daytona 500. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know that's got to exist somewhere. I didn't see anything crazy race-wise. The only thing was, uh, I mean, it was a nice race. But I'm saying, like, mm -hmm. we got prepped by, uh, you know, we're up there for Noah, Noah's bachelor party. We love Noah to death. Um, yeah, buddy. But he's a big, Congrats, he's, Noah. He's a big NASCAR guy, and uh, so is Quentin, his, his bro. Oh, that's right, Quentin. So Quentin, Quentin Clark. Clark. That's right. Wolf, Wolf out, if you will. <laughs> But uh, we, uh, he, uh, he kind of gave us the rundown. He's like, okay, so there's one black racer, I think, ever. Like, <laughs> he's like oh, shit. And he's like, he's like, you might hear people yell some stuff. He's like, but definitely booze. If there's, when they say his name, there's going to be booze. And uh, <laughs> he was right. <laughs> when they said uh, Bubba something. It, that's the thing. It's like, these, his name's it, Bubba? <laughs> his name's Bubba. And they still hate him. It's like, come on, man. You fucking... God damn. <laughs> how do you guys hate a guy named Bubba? Right, yeah. I would think that would be a selling point. <laughs> yeah. There definitely were some, some Bubba fans, but there was definitely uh, notable, like, Boo! middle fingers and shit. It's like, oh my God. Jesus yeah. Christ, dude. Dumb motherfuckers. There's just never been, like... I mean, I'm sure there's been other black racers, but this guy's pr pretty good, apparently. And uh, mm. it just, it upsets them that there's a good black racer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you know they banned the uh they banned the confederate flag at these things which is very mm. surprising no no confederate flag at nascar anymore right no um, i'm i'm very surprised by that honestly yeah and it's like uh the whole oh heritage not hate it's like yeah but you're all booing the only black guy in within 10 miles <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's like i don't buy heritage not hate come on it's a it's a little sticky to separate those two now when that's the response. <laughs> like exactly, it's like it, it, li literally, like you said unanimously, like we don't like him. Why? I mean, he's pretty good at racing. I just <laughs> I can't put my finger on it. I, I just don't like him. <laughs> I think he's disrespectful. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> it's always that shit, isn't it? It's like I don't think he's. I just think he's disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like I don't like his attitude. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun because I mean, like, it, it, it's fun to just like uh, play up. Like, um, I don't know. It's it's fun to like be in the midst of uh, groups like that and just like troll. I don't know. Like in person trolling is funny. Uh, like we we were sitting behind these like two old dudes and like uh, like we're just drinking, hanging out. And uh, <laughs> there was like this thing where it's like they had like people who were joining the air force. And they mm. had them like swear into the air force like at the race like I guess they Holy just knew it shit, would, dude. they knew it would get a good pop I mean I guess you know what I mean they're like the crowd will like this yeah and uh, <laughs> so they fucking they swear them in cool crowds go the crowds liking it and then I was like I'll tell you what it's just unfortunate that uh, he's not that, that they're not swearing in under a better commander in chief because <laughs> we had we had Trump. Uh, and he got screwed out of the election, and now we got fucking Biden, and he, and he's not going to do anything, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> one of the old dudes turned around and he like looked at me and Nick, and he goes, "These guys are all right." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> these, these boys are all right. <laughs> You're a goddamn double agent. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 you know what? They, they had a, uh, you know, they'll bring in guests to like start the race, like wave the flag. Yeah. To promote James Bond, they had Daniel Craig there. Daniel Craig was waving the flag. 
What? I know. I know. It was kind of cool seeing Daniel Craig. And, uh, I mean, I got to say, it did, it did feel like I was pulling some Bond shit. Going undercover, <laughs> pretending to be a Trump fan, and getting called all right by these guys. Felt, felt <laughs> Bond, it felt Bond-esque. <laughs> and now you're coming back to the, uh, the Federation of LGBTQ to let me know all about it. And I'm just like, excellent. Now for your next mission, we need you to go to the Indy 500. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> It's like yeah, that they're gonna have Idris Elba take over, so it's like you got Black James Bond and then LGBTQ. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this boy backs the uh, he backs the blue, pink, and white. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. but I'm trying to think of anything else that like really happened. I mean, it was just fun, like just drinking and watching NASCAR. Like, I good time. I will say. I mean. It's definitely white trash as fuck, and I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, in terms of like, you have to, you you, you got to be in a in a setting where the only black guy that's gonna go out is gonna get booed. You know what I mean? And that, yeah, that sucks. That there's a fucking state. There's a fucking, I don't. The the capacity is like 150 thousand. You know what I mean? So it's like Jesus Christ. It's like that sucks that 150 thousand people collectively are like, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of that, I mean, I, I didn't hear anyone using the N-word or anything. It's like, I didn't hear anything, like, crazy racist. Uh, outside of that, <laughs> it's pretty fun to just get drunk and watch NASCAR. <laughs> like, I'm, I Hell can't yeah, lie. Dude. It, was pretty, it was pretty fun live. I mean, honestly, that, that, that does sound like a really fun time. <laughs> just getting a fucking cooler with the boys and watching the cars go around. Yeah, yeah it was a good... I mean, I, mean I, I, was, I was saying to you, it's like... Uh, you know, fuck that shit. Like, it, it, anybody who doesn't like a racer just because he's black, you're a racist piece of shit. You know what I mean? Fuck, right, yeah. fuck, fuck those people. But uh, I also, I don't think you can uh, damn something just because its fan base sucks. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not NASCAR's fault that it attracts fucking idiots. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And that's, it, uh, the, the joke I was saying to you is, uh, I mean, to me, I don't think I hate God. I hate Christians. You know what I mean? Christians to me are just Rick and Morty fans. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not God's fault that all of his followers are fucking shitheads. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that, dude. I get that. It, it's like when you get into a band like, a, like fucking Radiohead or something like that. I, yeah. I, like, didn't get into Radiohead for the longest time because it's just, like, the, the fan base was just so fucking annoying. It's just like, oh, you have to listen to this. is real music. And I'm just like, shut <laughs> Yeah. And then you listen to it and you're like, oh, my God, Pyramid Song? <laughs> have you even heard King of Limbs? Yeah, it doesn't mean that shit's bad, you know? It's just... Yeah. Raise hell, praise Dale. That's all we're saying. Right. Hey, roll tide, baby. <laughs> raise hell, praise Dale. Raise hell, praise Dale. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, another little thing I thought was pretty funny, because I'm not really familiar with any of these guys, but uh, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm cheering for Chase Elliott, because he's, he's the Hooters guy. He drives the Hooters car. Ah, hell yeah. God's yeah. man. Yeah, which rocks. I mean, he, he wasn't driving the Hooters car at the one I went to, unfortunately. He also, like, occasionally drives a Napa Auto Parts car. So he was in the <laughs> he was in the Napa Auto Parts car, but you saw a lot of his merch with Hooters on it, and I was like, hell yeah, dude! I I mean, the hat I have is like a NASCAR hat. It says Hooters, and on the side it says number nine, <laughs> num mighty number nine, Chase Elliott drives the Hooters car. <laughs> hell yeah, buddy! Now yeah. I gotta ask: is his is his pit crew just like uh, Hooter girls, just standing around with uh, plates of wings? <laughs> oh, I, I I wish though that that would be fucking <laughs> awesome. I was hoping. Because that was another cool thing that uh, I didn't realize they did. NASCAR, I will say this. NASCAR, no, there's no better fan experience that I've been to than NASCAR. Because mm -hmm. they let you bring in the shit you want to bring in. Like, you can bring in fucking any food you want, any booze you want. I think they have a like, oh, limitation nice. on how big the cooler can be. Like, And that's just because it has to like be able to sit under your seat or whatever. But uh, they also had, did, like, the, it's like this fan experience thing where there was just all this um stuff outside of the arena like like all of, like trailers like of the different racers selling like merch and like all these like booths giving away like free shit like there was like one just like fucking like uh is it bubba rays is that the barbecue sauce 
Uh, they, baby Rays. Yeah. Sweet Baby Rays. Yeah, they had a booth and they were just giving away like full size bottles of like barbecue. It's like it's crazy. No. Like, it was like it was like a little like Comic Con attached to it. It's like and that was just part of the ticket price. Like you just go hang out at that. God damn, dude. Yeah, it's Plan Con. I haven't seen any other like like NFL, you know, it, wrestling, like any of it. It's like I haven't seen any other thing that like does this like big fan experience for like a big race. It's crazy. Dude, that sounds incredible. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so I, anyway, I mentioned that cause it's like, I was hoping that Hooters was going to have a booth, <laughs> you know, checking on the girls, of course, uh, <laughs> I love checking in on the girls. Uh, no, I was, I was thinking you were going to come back with like a tight t-shirt and like a fucking, uh, some orange booty shorts and, uh, be like, Oh, somebody stopped at Femboy Hooters. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but th- th- the reason I bring Chase Elliott up is because, I mean, yeah, cheering for Hooters, love Hooters. Legitimately, it's, 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 I-, I always say it's irony poisoning. Like, it is ironic, but it's like, I, I also think all of this is, sh- all of this shit is fun, legitimately. I'm never going to be the guy who's doing, I'll put all my Chase, my Chase hat. See, no, number nine, baby. Hell yeah. They do have incredible wings. But I'm just saying, like, I, like, irony poisoning in the, in, in the sense that it's like, yes, I, I think Hooters is like a very silly restaurant. As my example, Hooters is silly, but it's like, I would never just like be really into something that I also didn't think was fun. It's like, it's also just fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get um, that, dude. But Chase Elliott had a, had a line that I thought was hilarious because um, they, they were doing like pre, pre-race interviews. Um, and it's, it's, this response is just so funny to me because of how nonchalant it is. <laughs> <laughs> so he got like 12 in this race. He was doing good, but like spun out at a certain point, right? He got, like, yeah, he got like 12. Uh, but apparently he had won it the past two, like the past two years that they'd done this like big race. Like it, it was like a big annual event in Char that they always do this race. Okay. And uh, <laughs> uh, the lady goes, Chase, uh, you you've won the um, you've won this race the, two years in a row. Are you looking for your third win? And he goes, Yeah, I don't see why not. You know, it's a beautiful day. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, he's just like this like this country guy, and he's just like he didn't even go like, Oh yeah, he's like I'm gonna fucking like do everything I can. He's just like, Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> I'm here, dude. Can we get Chase to win a race? <laughs> Can we get Chase Elliott on uh, DP one of these days? Oh, if it, if it was possible. I mean, we're not we're not engrossed in this world. It felt like going to Narnia, like walking through the <laughs> walking through no, the world and going to a world you've never been to. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, w- what I mean by we're not in this world is, dude, he's, he's famous, dude. Like, it wouldn't it yeah. would be easy to get to get him on. Like, he's he's really fucking famous in that circle. <laughs> dude that's fucking hilarious dude but that answer was and he's... so fun yeah i mean i don't see why not i mean <laughs> <laughs> beautiful day out yeah dude, beautiful day <laughs> I-, I love that a-, a big thing that was contingent on his reply was just like the quality of the weather <laughs> like he was going for a fucking sunday drive or something i mean it was it was like legitimately like if you're gonna go to a race dude we picked the perfect day to go it was we were sitting in the shade all day. It's like not hot, like just drinking beers. It was like, it was a picturesque day for a little NASCAR. Dude, hell yeah. Yeah. Race it was time in. to kick it into overdrive. <laughs> oh, I-, I saw that y'all kicked it into overdrive. I'm sure uh, the Formula Locos, the other uh, racing. <laughs> we, we certainly did kick it into overdrive. The other uh, jabs at the President of the United States. <laughs> Are you, I, I start, will you be looking for your for your third win here today, Chase? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. It's so funny. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So, shouts out to oh, Chase Owens. Uh, fuck, fuck NASCAR fans, but also, like, I don't know. Race doesn't come up. I, I, I like I like white trash, man. I gotta. I I really do love pretty much anything that's white trash. I love like bull riding and fucking NASCAR and fucking whatever. And it's like 
I just, it is. I wish people it would is. the white because it's like I just like the trash. I love being in the trash. <laughs> I will say it is very unfortunate that you get a lot of the racism, sexism, and all the other gunk thrown in with just fun fucking activities. Right. It's, it, that's, and that's, that's definitely the reason more people are like, fuck that shit. But it's like, it's fun, man. Like, it's fun. It's like, fun. It's fun it, it attracts fucking like worthless people. You know what I mean? Because if, yeah. if you are a true racist, you're a worthless person. But it's like, that doesn't mean watching a little NASCAR getting, drinking 18 beers isn't fun. <laughs> Right? Have you ever been to a rodeo? That shit is hype as fuck. It's fun. Just watch yeah, a try to like they wrangle a cow. <laughs> yeah, dude, down to down to the fucking uh, expo center. <laughs> yeah, they fucking rules. That shit is awesome. Or fucking stock car racing down at East Side Speedway. So we're yeah we're we we're here to say uh, no. You know you hear dumb fucks, but oh, what about what about White History Month? You know what I mean? You hear? I think we just need a trash month. Anyone and everyone, <laughs> anyone, we don't care what gender, color, anyone, this is the month where we celebrate trash. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care what it's going to look like. Trash is all encompassing. It's all fun. Just hang out. Trash is for everybody. There's, there's 30 to 31 uh, dumpster days that everybody can cash in on. So <laughs> flash your trash. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That is right. Take a look on the grimy side. <laughs> Say, hey, honey, take a walk on the grimy side. That's right. And there's all that trash on the ground. Race hell, praise Dale, is what we're saying. Race hell, praise Dale. Get yourself some hooters. Race Dale, praise hell. <laughs> now, you know where I'd like to go is Femboy Hooters. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's just a meme, right? There's no real establishment. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the way to know if you're in a femboy hooters or not is if there's uh, estrogen in your water, and then you're kind of fucked. <laughs> I mean that that would be kind of awesome. That would, that would mellow me out. That's like fucking sativa, a little estrogen. <laughs> Dude, as much as many times as you go to hooters, though, you'd probably start transitioning unbeknownst. <laughs> you just wake up one day, you'd be like, "Why is my skin softer? <laughs> <laughs> my nipples have been hurting for weeks." <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I don't want to no. have a Bogart here. Uh, I told you about the NASCAR. Did, what have you been up to? How did how, how, how last week go for you? We hung out. Last week? Last week went, uh, honestly, I've had better weeks. Work was very slow. Uh, and, the, yeah, the, the kicker of it all, though, was that. So, you know, I've been into the, uh, I've been into crypto lately. I have a yes. Coinbase account, and I've invested in a few things. Uh, not a lot. But I've invested. And I don't know if it was connected or not or whatever, but I got a nice little call on Saturday morning from my bank saying that somebody in London had tried to use my card for something. Oh, my God. So, uh, I've been celebrating uh, Columbus Day weekend, that uh, wonderful and all-inclusive holiday <laughs> with yeah, no sure. debit card that I can use. <laughs> I will say, you know what, speaking of Columbus Day weekend, it's, I don't get the rebranding of Indigenous Peoples Day. I get that it's like, fuck Columbus, you was a piece of shit, but it's like, you're just changing it to Indigenous people. It's still like c celebrating Columbus, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that doesn't make it not a shitty day, just changing it to like, you know? Could, it, could we change it so that like I could actually get my card working again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Though? No, it's like, no, I get that. It's like that. Um, it's like a fucking. Um, it's in the same vein as like uh, you know, well, we want a more inclusive police force. <laughs> it's like, well, you still got a police force, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're still kicking the shit out of people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't, I don't really care what the race of the cop is who's beating people up. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like the the day is still like changing into Indigenous Peoples Day is like the day is still like oh Columbus came and like started taking over their land. How's that a celebratory day for them? Well, I, I think a lot of the rebranding is um, it's moving away from that to be like, hey, uh, remember that thing Columbus did? Well, uh, he shouldn't have. And so we're going to celebrate the people that he uh, was uh, killing when he came over and died. Yeah. Interesting. I don't think anybody's uh, trying to shift the focus to, like, um, including Columbus at all. 
I think it's very much a, uh, you know, hey, Columbus fucked us over. Let's uh, not talk about him anymore. <laughs> yeah, true. True. But I get that. It's uh, I feel like it is an easy fix for a lot of things to um, just simply change the marketing on yeah, how they're presented. Like, I, I mean... <laughs> Well, it's like you. It's like it's like as soon as companies figured out how much of a cash cow pride would be, and then everybody was jumping on it to make their fucking like uh, laxative logos and their fucking bank statements <laughs> rainbow colored, and it was just like, <laughs> okay, it's 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 anti Italian discrimination. It's anti Italian discrimination. <laughs> Christopher Columbus was a great man. <laughs> Dude, I forgot about that fucking episode of The Sopranos. That, is, like one, the, that uh, is one of the funnier episodes, in my opinion. When when Tony Tony breaks Sills' balls for going to a Columbus Day protest. Yeah, and just all of them being like super pro Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Very funny. You know what happened, Gary Cooper? The strong silent type. The strong silent type. Right? That's exactly right. That is he right. was strong, he was silent. And uh, he sucked a bunch of cock. Well, I'm sorry. The, the the Brits are fucking with your money. That's what I'll say. Yeah, those those fucking uh, gap tooth uh, bitches across the pond. They are trying to nickel and dime me, or should I say, pound and quid me? Because uh, <laughs> they're trying to pound your ass. They're trying to they're trying to pound my ass with a pound. <laughs> well, the weirdest the weirdest fucking thing about it was that like. It, it was just an it was an attempted charge because I got the call being like, "Hey, we uh, we noticed somebody in London was trying to charge your card for a dollar thirty seven at like a medical group." Mm. So well, I have a lot more. Yeah, so like now I have a lot more questions about like, well, were they trying to get like medical help? Like, how the fuck did they get my card? <laughs> well, what I'll say is because uh, that that was a big thing when I worked for the like call center of the bank. Oh, that's right. You have insider information. I do. This is a little insider trading we're about to get into. But that is a trend you'll see, is, uh, and good on your bank for catching it with that low amount. Because a trend you'll see is people will try to charge a small amount, and if it goes through, then they'll be like, oh. okay, we got a card that works. Boom. Let's fucking start charging crazy amounts. I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so $1.37, it's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's like the uh, that's like the dip in your pinky in before you. That's right. That's like adjust the tip. It's like yeah, like <laughs> come on, I'll just get just the tip in. But then <laughs> once the tip's in, come on, baby. Do you think anybody's ever tried to get out of paying for their meal, being like, "Hey, I only do just the tip." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the tip. I only pay the tip. <laughs> Here's ten percent. I'll have the rest of you later. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pay me back pound for pound. Pound for pound before I pound you pound for pound. <laughs> well, yeah, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened. That's brutal. But they got it figured out or? Yeah, they, well, they're going to get it figured out. I need to call them tomorrow because thanks to the holiday, thanks to this colonizer, mm. I haven't been able to get my new debit card take, uh, straightened out. So uh, wow. I'm going to be calling the bank tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, fuming. And then I'm going to do a little day trade because Bitcoin is going up, baby. <laughs> That's right. Columbus is still fucking over the common, the common people. You know what I mean? Columbus. You're just trying to live your life and this fucking piece of shit colonizer is still fucking us over. Fuck you, Columbus. That's our official stance. <laughs> Fuck you, Columbus. That's the official DP word right here. <laughs> yeah. You were bad. You were bad at. I mean, you know, we live in America, but it's like you were bad at what you did, Columbus. You thought you were in India. You stupid piece of shit. I, I saw. A, I saw a thing recently. It was like a meme that somebody did, and it's like even by even by his day standards, Columbus was a fucking idiot. Because like the consensus view at that point was that the Earth was a lot bigger than it actually was, and Columbus was just like fuck that. I'm just going to sail straight ahead and I'm going to get there. But he was like wildly off, even by like the experts of his time. So if he hadn't have run into where he ran into, like in the, in the fucking Caribbean, he, he would have just died in the middle of the ocean. Like, he wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Cause like yeah. he, he thought he was going to be going like a very short distance. And instead he ended up traveling like 20,000 or something miles, I think. Yeah. Or where he, where he wanted to go was a lot farther than he planned for. So like, he was a he was a fucking moron to begin with. 
And he was a moron after he got back to fucking Europe. Yeah, I mean, exactly right. And this is what? I, I, this is episode 24, I think, right? Oh, 24, yeah. Listen, the Jack Bauer episode. <laughs> it's the Jack Bauer episode. You're, you're going to go Jack Bauer on all of these fraudsters' asses. If we find you, we are going to hurt you. We're, we're going to get you. We're going to break your kneecaps. We're going to do horrible things to you because you know what? You, th you thought four loco was bad? Well, this is 24 loco. <laughs> we are going to go on your ass 24 hours a day <laughs> until I get my thirty-seven back that you tried to charge in London, England. <laughs> Filthy gap tooth motherfuckers. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. An impassioned uh, plea from... I'm steamed. I'm mad. You tried to steal a dollar thirty-seven from DP, and that was your first and your last mistake. A dollar thirty-seven. That's right. That's like an insignificant amount of Ethereum. <laughs> DP never forgets. You fucked with our Bitcoin, and we never forget. Yeah, because this bitch coin never forgets. This bitch wants her coin so that she can reinvest it. <laughs> Bitcoin, yeah. Bitcoin, that dude. I was looking, I was looking into it to see like uh, how hard it would be to actually make a crypto because <laughs> we could do like a fucking hog coin or something like that. <laughs> hog coin would be pretty funny. It's like you don't have to sign up for our Patreon. Just buy some hog coin. That's how you can invest in DP for for a uh, low coin. <laughs> <laughs> for a low coin. <laughs> I typed out that's a beautiful joke. That is, I could, I could see it on Twitter. Because it's yeah, Loco is right there. L O C O. For Loco. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and the abbreviation would be like 4LK. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, either the Bitcoin or it would be funny if we just like were doing exclusive pods and like whatever. And uh, it was all behind the paywall of an OnlyFans. We just have an OnlyFans instead of a Patreon. <laughs> Dude, uh, the guy, one of the guys from uh, Durag and the Deer Tag does that with his thing. He calls it the last of the Montanas because his name is Drew Montana. But it's a podcast exclusive to OnlyFans. <laughs> That's, yeah, that fucking rules. That's great. I mean, I'm down. I'm down to do a pod on Only or do some premium content on the uh, Only Only Stands. Yeah. We just have to think of a different gimmick, I think, is the thing. You put it behind a paywall, it's like, hey, this is us talking about movies or something. <laughs> this is just if a you movie do, show. If you do it naked, you probably won't make as much money and people will just ask your feet a lot. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, if send us some DMs, folks, because if the money's there... I'll do a pod naked. I don't mind. <laughs> I really don't <laughs> All I want is that cash money. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to have to rechange it to uh, my my brother, my brother in D. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the thing is, uh, OnlyFans said they're getting rid of sexual content, right? Oh, no, they went back on that. Oh, I'm sure. Well, that was the dumbest thing they could have said. Why would they try to even try that? I mean, straight up. I mean, as much as they don't want to admit that, that is the majority of the thing that people use it for. Yeah, like, that's the only, like, use for it, really. That and people who are being ironic. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Putting a podcast on there is funny, but it's not, you know, come on. That's not what OnlyFans is used for. I, I think we should do a pod live from a Hooters. Ooh! Now that's an idea. Okay, all right. We got some stuff to think about here, folks. We do. We've got uh, blockchains that we can hammer out. We've got an OnlyFans that we can start. We've got uh, some fresh wings that we could uh, be gobbling down while we interview someone about their hog wild story. Oh, dude, if we could, if we could get some Hooter girls to come on the dais and tell a <laughs> hog wild story. Oh, my God. That would be so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> dude, um, do you think that... Uh, Me Megan, can you tell me a time... That you went hog wild? <laughs> and she'll be like, well, I was in the Taliban for 13 years. <laughs> What's that? She'll be like, well, I was in the Taliban for 13 years, and then when they came to power, there were differences in administrative rules. So here I am in America, the land of the free, home of the brave, where I can put my titties out on a platter and give That's you right. some fucking half-priced wings. 
That's what's great great about America, folks. We you're never gonna see something like Hooters in Afghanistan. I'll tell you that right now. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Uh ex Taliban member. I mean I you know, I, I you, you can call it oh it's it's a, it's it's exploitive, it's misogynistic. You can say all that. Guess what? I view it as the same thing as going to an art museum and appreciating the beautiful human body. Dude, dude, uh, fuck femboy hooters. What about Taliban hooters? <laughs> Shooters. I think, you know, in a fucking Tumblr art ass looking way, just somebody in a fucking like with a with a rifle or something like that. <laughs> An assault weapon and a crop top. <laughs> oh my god, Shooters would be a funny... <laughs> I mean, maybe we could make a meme or something. <laughs> Dude, how much you want to bet there's a fucking porn parody out there called Femboy Shooters? Femboy Shooters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that it, it's it's a lot of fun. Go to Hooters, folks. That's the homework this week from DP. Check out. You heard it here. You heard it for your first from your uh, from your uh, PhDP holder, Paige Campbell, <laughs> Doctor Pagey. Uh, go to Hooters. Order the wings. Check out the girls. Start a conversation. That's you never right. know what's gonna happen. Sometimes you just need to check in on the girls. Sometimes you just need to check in on the girls, and oop, they're doing fine. Exactly. I got this one Bitcoin, exactly right. and this one Ethereum. <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> mm. Hell yeah! Well, I mean, that's really that's my update. That's what I got. D, do you have anything else you want to uh, chat it up about? Well, I've got a few updates. Um, I am going to be playing a solo show with my experimental music. Um, for those f super fans of the show, will know that I do solo stuff under the th under the name D backslash W. Um, very easy to find <laughs> on uh, music uh, places like Spotify, Bandcamp, etc. I'm going to be playing as that this oh, Friday. Yeah. At a place in Philly called Harmony House. If you're in Philly, hit me up for the Addy. I think it's a free show. So if you uh, want to come hear some very good experimental music, uh, running the gambit from cello to electric guitar and a uh, Russian synth, uh, check me out, check that out. Send me a DM and you can come see the show. Uh, other thing is Lisa is going to be playing at the Roast of Drew Montana of Last of the Montana's Fan, only fans exclusive. And uh, do rag in the deer tag podcast. We are going to be playing at his roast on October twenty second. So get your tickets for that. Fuck yeah! And then last thing I want to leave you with is my Bitcoin address for my wallet. Please send me some Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> my wallet number is XKCD two one three five six seven eight K five. Okay, I'm done. I'm not doing this bit anymore. Like, this might be why your bank account is getting hacked. <laughs> you're telling me you're, you're dropping all of the numbers. Oh my god! You know, I just think, you know, dude, you do that when you open a bank account, right? It's like, hey, I uh, just got my new bank account. If you want to send me some money, here's my account number. Yeah, my routing number is. <laughs> send me some funds. Oh my god! Well, I got to rethink everything. I've been fast and loose with that. Oh man. Well. I still hate England, if it's any consolation. Bitcoin, more like shitcoin. I hope that didn't put me down the crap. <laughs> yes. <sighs> yes, that is exactly right. That's right. So what have you been going on, Paige? Week, you got anything to plug? Wait, what'd you say? Um, so there's another old classico. Uh, I don't know much to plug. I mean, uh, you got Busty on the 29th. Busky's always a good time. Come to Busky. Come hang out. It's going to rule. Uh, I mean, other than that, I'm just going to I'm gonna keep this crazy trade rolling. I'm going to Slipknot on Wednesday, so. Oh, Hail Satan. Hail Satan. That's right. Hail Satan. Go to Hooters. Raise hell. Praise Dale. And we love you. We'll see you next Sunday at 6. Good night, sweet people.